Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going over my week number two running back start or sit decisions for the 2023 fantasy football season. We are going to begin with Thursday Night Football and travel all the way up until the doubleheader on Monday Night Football and tell you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the running backs in every single matchup. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit hit that subscribe button down below while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on twitter please do so at notorious fntsy and if you want to check out my week number two weekly rankings on patreon as well as getting all of your questions answered on there make sure you click on the link in the video description for my patreon seven dollars and fifty cents a month so without further ado let's get into my week number two running back start or sit decisions we begin with Thursday Night Football, the Minnesota Vikings at the Philadelphia Eagles, a rematch of a disaster class of a game from the Minnesota Vikings last season. In this matchup for the Eagles, they are going to have a triple-headed running back core yet again of Gainwell, Swift, plus either Boston Scott or Rashad Penny. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Nick Gainwell actually played a majority of the snaps last week up against the Patriots, and yes, that is true, but at the end of the day, I think every single week, we are going to get a different running back as the top scorer of the Philadelphia Eagles. I think week one, it was Gainwell. This week, it might be Swift, or it could end up being Boston Scott, right? And I think even if there is a running back every single week that ends up being better than the others pulling away from the others there's going to be a lot of weeks where even the one running back who's successful wasn't even a top 24 running back for fantasy football so they probably weren't worth starting anyways now if I had to guess and I had to play one of these guys maybe my running back situation is just demolished because I had JK Dobbins my backup running backs aren't looking the best then sure I guess I would roll out Kenneth Gainwell because all offseason, there seemed to be a lot of hype for Gainwell, and then Gainwell was the guy in week number one. But would it shock me at all? Thursday night football up against a garbage Minnesota Vikings defense if DeAndre Swift tore him a new asshole? No. Or if Boston Scott somehow scored two touchdowns? So again, while I would say, oh, if you had to start one, it would be Gainwell, my confidence in that is at an all-time low, like that John Bellion song. For the Minnesota Vikings, again, this was a disaster of a game for them last year. Kirk Cousins was seeing ghosts like Sam Dartle in prime time up against the Patriots. And I think if they want to win this game, they're going to hand the rock off to Alexander Madison a tud. Now, Madison looked just about okay in week number one. I didn't think he looked amazing. I also didn't think he looked terrible. The Eagles defense looked all right against Zeke as well as Ramondre Stevenson last week. So I think Alexander Madison will definitely have a start worthy day. Ty Chandler, his backup would be a sit for me. Next up, we move to the beginning of the Sunday slate with the Green Bay Packers at the Atlanta Falcons. Now, if you are an NFC North fan, I know how Jordan Love looked in week number one. Probably spooked you a little bit, right? Because if you're an older fella or gal, you dealt with Brett Favre. The baton was passed to Rodgers, and then the baton was passed to Jordan Love. And you're like, finally, after all these years of my teams being tormented, it's over, right? Now it's just Jordan Love. Who's scared of Jordan Love me tender, love me sweet? And then Jordan Love absolutely eviscerated the Chicago Bears defense. Now, is that because it's the Bears defense and because Aaron Jones did a lot of the heavy lifting? Or is that because Jordan Love is legitimately good? We'll see this week up against the Atlanta Falcons. So Aaron Jones, his availability is up in the air right now, right? I would say it's probably 50-50 he ends up playing or not. So if you have Aaron Jones, you should probably have a backup plan on your bench. And if you don't have one, you should pick someone up off of the waiver wire. If Aaron Jones does not play, obviously you sit him in your fantasy football lineup. And if you, for some reason, drafted Aaron Jones as well as A.J. Dillon, you would play A.J. Dillon. If you drafted A.J. Dillon, then you just lucked into some big upside up against the Falcons defense if Aaron Jones does not play. A.J. Dillon, to me, doesn't have enough skill, the same skill set that Aaron Jones has to really become like a top three back at the end of the week if he is the guy getting a majority of the snaps, right? If he is the lead back. But with that said, that doesn't mean that he can't have a top 12 performance. 
He's just nowhere near the same level of a pass catcher as Aaron Jones, so I think his upside is limited that way. At the end of the day, though, if Aaron Jones doesn't go, I'm definitely playing A.J. Dillon. The Atlanta Falcons have a two-headed backfield here with Bijan Robinson and Tyler Algier. Ultimately, Bijan Robinson is way better than Tyler Algier, and I think as the season prolongs, we are going to see Bijan Robinson break away from Tyler Algier, right? But the first couple weeks of the season, I think Tyler Algier is going to continue to kind of bear his ugly head out there, right? We're going to see some Tyler Algier getting touchdowns. We're going to see some videos on Twitter of Bijan Robinson, fantasy football owners, launching their fucking remote directly through their television, right? Because Algier vultures Bijan. At the end of the day, though, you're not sitting Bijan Robinson, even against the Packers defense. If you sit Bijan Robinson, you are an insane person. His upside is unmatched. We saw that game in week one against the Panthers. Bijan looked incredible. Sure, it sucks that Arthur Smith wants to use Algier, and I think he's going to continue to use Algier just because of the fact that they run the ball so much. I definitely would rather have Bijan over Algier, and Algier's a start. Definitely a touchdown dependent start, but there is so much confusion at the running back position right now entering into week number two. So there are a lot worse options than Tyler Algier. Moving to the third game here, the Las Vegas Raiders at the Buffalo Bills. No one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills who just lost to the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. You just lost to Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson, all these Bills fans on Twitter, every Tua threw a pick on Sunday. Oh my God, Tua turning the ball over. Your motherfucker threw so many picks. He threw more picks than Tua threw touchdowns on Sunday. And Tua had a fantastic showing. Josh Allen sucked ass. 0-5 in overtime. What happened, Josh? What happened, buddy? Now again... I'm not trying to be a homer here as a Dolphins fan and shit all over Josh Allen, but I think even Bills fans were probably pissed off at that performance. He looked bad, but that Jets defense looks legit. It's a shame that Aaron Rodgers got hurt. It's a shame that all signs are pointing towards his season being over. I don't take injuries lightly. It sucks. It sucks badly. I hope Aaron Rodgers is able to recover and play next season. I do. I like Aaron Rodgers, so that sucks. There's a large difference, though, large difference for the Bills going against the Jets defense versus the Raiders. I know the Raiders defense actually looked pretty decent on Sunday against the Broncos, but the Broncos offense versus the Bills offense night and day. I know week one, the Bills offense sucks and people are going to panic and be like, oh my God, the Bills are finished. I like saying that too because I hate the Bills, but that doesn't mean that that's actually true, right? I'm not going to say that in a video. I'll tweet it out because I think it's funny. The Buffalo Bills... James Cook looked good. I think if James Cook wasn't going up against the Jets defense, he would have went fucking nuclear in that game like his name was Oppenheimer. So I'm starting James Cook. He looked real good on Monday night football. Josh Jacobs played pretty eh against the Denver Broncos. He was torching the Broncos all of last year. I thought he'd have a huge game. He looked pretty eh. Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Pornstar was carving that defense up like they were the Thanksgiving turducken that John Madden created. So Josh Jacobs... Up against the Bills' defense, I think he should have a bounce-back spot here. Samir White is a sit. Damian Harris is a sit as well. Like, we saw Latavius Murray last night, so that's not really very promising for Damian Harris's upside. Next up, we got the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I feel the same way about the Ravens as I do with the Philadelphia Eagles. Nick, don't you know Justice Hill looked good in Week 1? Yeah, I know. He looked good. But by the time we get to Sunday, when this AFC North rivalry matchup is played... How confident are we that the three backs are going to be Edwards, Hill, and Melvin Gordon? I wouldn't say I'm fully confident in that. I think Kareem Hunt, Uncle Leonard Fournette, could end up being the back to have on the Ravens. So while everyone's going to splooge, splurge, not splooge, that's a different thing, pause, you know, but splurge all over Gus Edwards or Justice Hill, they're going to blow all their fab on him. What happens if fucking Kareem Hunt shows up? Kareem Hunt is way better than any of these guys. So again, if I had to pick one, if they're magically there on Sunday, go ahead and start Gus Edwards. I like him better than Justice Hill. But I don't feel very confident right now on Tuesday, in the middle of the night after this Jets game that just happened, saying that Gus Edwards is by far and away the guy because I think they might bring someone else in. So Gus, 
Hill and Melvin Gordon are going to be sits for me. Joe Mixon of the Bengals is a start. I know the whole Bengals team, disaster. Titanic into the fucking iceberg, right? Terrible game from the Bengals. Joe Shiesty looked like he had no idea what was going on. T. Higgins scored zero points. Thanks, T. Higgins. But again, it was week one. Don't overreact to week one. Another AFC North matchup. Again here, Browns versus the Bengals last week. Ravens versus the Bengals this time. And if you guys know at home, the Cincinnati Bengals can't do shit against the Cleveland Browns or at, at the Cleveland Browns. Joe Burrow, I don't think, has won a single game. So that game had the writing on the wall going into it. Mixon, I think, has a decent game here up against the Ravens defense. I don't think this is really his coming out party, his biggest game of the season, but he could finish as a top 12 back in this spot. Travion Williams, the backup for Joe Mixon, is a sit. Next up, we got the Seattle Seahawks at the Detroit Lions. Now, the Seattle Seahawks put up a disaster class on Sunday. Now, I know that maybe not a lot of people are even watching the fucking game, but the LA Rams, a team that everyone, me included, expected without Cooper Cup, this offense to be as limp dick as it gets, right? The offense to not really be able to move the ball, but Puka Nakua turned into the second coming of Randy Moss, and this offense was moving the ball with aggression. Kyron Williams was just tag team in that defense. It was fantastic. Him and Puka formed an Eiffel Tower over that Seahawks defense, and Geno Smith looked like a chicken with his head cut off, right? Down game for the Seahawks. Kenneth Walker, shit tier game. Charbonnet didn't do much. But again, week one, don't overreact. Don't just be like, oh my God, Kenneth Walker's finished. He had a bad game, right? Don't do that. Same thing, oh my God, Burrow shit the bed. Don't do that. Sure, you can say they had a bad week one. I would agree with you, right? Anyone with two eyes would tell you that, right? But what I'm saying is don't panic just yet for fantasy. So Kenneth Walker, eh, game. I guess he wasn't terrible, but not a great game to Kenneth Walker standard. Still looked like the RB1 on the team. Going up against the Lions. I know the Lions defense looked pretty good up against the Chiefs, but the Chiefs were just, just everything went wrong for the Chiefs, right? Canarius Tony couldn't catch a common cold, right? Nothing was going well for them. Lots of drops. Mahomes, the pocket was kind of, I don't know. It just didn't, it just didn't work. Well, it was week one. It is what it is. I expect Walker to bounce back here and have a good spot. Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. If you're a Jameer Gibbs owner, you watched that first game against the Chiefs, and you thought, what could have been? Right? What could have been if Mr. Dan Campbell, the guy who wants to chew your kneecaps off, just said, hey, let's give the ball more to Jameer Gibbs. Right? Gibbs looked explosive. Gibbs was making cuts. Gibbs looked like he could run a motherfucker over like his name was Derrick Henry. But that's not what happened. Right? He, he did some of that, but he didn't get the ball enough to come to fruition for fantasy. Now, do I think that Jameer Gibbs is going to become the workhorse back this week? No. But I think this is going to be a situation where every week you see more and more and more production out of Jameer Gibbs until he eventually potentially becomes a top 10, top 5 running back for fantasy football. So again, week one, do not panic. Sure, it sucked. Maybe week two will be just slightly better, right? But he's still a start-worthy back. David Montgomery still going to be getting carries, though, because again, they're easing in Jameer Gibbs. The Seahawks defense got a train ran on them by the LA Rams offense, running the ball. So I think Gibbs and Montgomery can both feast in this matchup. If I had a gun to my head and you asked me, Nick, who's going to score more points, Gibbs or Montgomery? I would tell you Montgomery. I would. But if you're talking strictly based on upside, right, I think Gibbs could score 28 points in this game, right? If Montgomery has a great game, he's getting you 16, right? That's okay. But Gibbs clearly still has more upside. Zach Charbonnet, I still think, is going to be a potential late-season league winner. But right now, he is best left on the bench with Kenneth Walker III as the lead back. Next up, we got the LA Chargers at the Tennessee Titans. Chargers! You're another team. What happened? What happened? All that talk. All that talk. And Justin Herbert just checked down all game. Oh my god. Some fucking stupid-ass reporter came out. Keenan Allen's going to go balls deep on Cater Kohu. Cater Kohu locked that fucker up and threw away the key. What happened? What happened? I said all week. I, I was wrong too. I said all week that I thought that was going to be a lower scoring game. It wasn't lower scoring. But, uh, you know, it, it was fun. As a Dolphins fan, it was sick. Tua dismantled the establishment of the defense. That throw to Tyreek made me ejaculate my pants. I jizzed in my pants like the Lonely Island song. The way he threw that ball to Tyreek on the fade, 
He threw that shit into a keyhole. Like, you know where you put your key in the door? That was how small of a window it was. Tyreek is four feet tall, and Bro caught a fade to win the game. Beautiful. But back into what actually matters here, the running backs. I know not everyone wants to hear some rant about the Dolphins, right? Nick, get to the fucking point! Jackass, this is a video about fantasy football, and I can't do the voice right now for some reason because I was screaming J-E-T-S as they beat down the Buffalo Bills, baby. So Austin Eckler against the Titans. Wet dream matchup. Wet dream. I will have wet dreams thinking about this, but we don't know how healthy Eckler is. There's going to be more reports coming out soon. Will Eckler be good to go or not? Eckler on one leg, he could use his third leg as his second leg and score a million fantasy points against the Titans. But again, his availability is under question, right? This is the Titans. This isn't the toughest team on earth to beat. So I think Eckler will play, but I don't think we're going to get a full Eckler workload. I don't think he's going to be out there going crazy. Probably similar workload to what we saw last week where Kelly did mix in. And I know if you had Eckler, it was a little frustrating, but Eckler had a great game. That guy just tore my defense a new asshole, right? He was taking us out to dinner. Um, Actually, yeah, he he just destroyed us. It wasn't even close. There was one run where I thought he was going, it it had to have been like 80 yards to the crib, and then Javon Holland came out of nowhere like an RKO from Randy Orton and stopped him. I thought it was over. Like, I thought we were just about to get just destroyed by that. But uh, yeah, Dolphins defense needs to figure it out against the run. We'll talk about that later with the Dolphins versus Patriots on Sunday football but Eckler if he plays you're playing him don't galaxy brain yourself play him Joshua Kelly if Eckler plays I'm still playing him but again I'm not saying he's gonna do what he did last week right what he the numbers he put up last week were downright incredible Derrick Henry of the late titans I know there's gonna be people panicking Nick did you see that uh Derrick Henry didn't get a majority of the snaps actually Tajay Spears did Nick um did you see that well you want to know why because at the end of the game they're throwing a lot at the end of the game they were blocked. They were trying to get the running back to block. And Tajay was blocking, right? Derrick Henry ain't going out there to fucking block. Derrick Henry goes out there to stiff arm some poor bastard into Middle Earth, which he did in that game. Am I worried about Derrick Henry? Fuck no, baby. I'm not worried at all. And I don't think you should be either. And that Chargers defense looked like they were ready to give up a bunch of rushing yards. It's just the Dolphins kept throwing. And uh, it was fun to watch. But as a Dolphins fan, I want to see us run the ball more. Moving next to the Chicago. Chicago Bears at Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Before we get on into this matchup, though, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that like button down below. Bears at Bucks. Lil Herbert was just eh against the Packers, but that was a game that went south pretty quick. Pretty quick. You didn't see a lot on Red Zone. I was watching Red Zone on one screen, and on the other screen, I had the quad box of all the games going on. It was just... Like, you look up, and Fields is on the ground, or Fields is getting hit. Fields is running around, trying to fucking do some crazy Madden thing where he just runs to the left, to the right, like uh, Bo Jackson, and somehow just runs right into the end zone, right, in that old uh, video game. That's what he was trying to do, and it just wasn't working. So, Roshan looked good, I thought. I thought Roshan looked good. I thought Herbert looked okay. I still think Herbert's the lead back. I think Roshan eventually might end up as the lead back if Herbert continues to play like this. But again, it's not really an indictment on Herbert, though, because the offense as a whole was just just bad, right? DJ Moore had like three fantasy points or four. Not what I was expecting. Could be a bounce back spot, though, up against the Bucks. This could be a huge letdown spot for the Bucks, right? Because they just beat the Vikings. Now, no one... No sane person thinks the Vikings are like some Super Bowl contenders, right? Their defense is just so bad that I don't think that's really possible. But still, a great win for Baker. Rashad White looked good, so I'm playing Rashad White. But I think this might be a game where it's the Bears coming out party. So I still like Khalil Herbert. I definitely do prefer Rashad White, though. Sean Tucker, I think, is going to continue to get involved. But White was catching so many balls from Baker. It was like, it was was a thing of beauty. So Rashad White, stick him in there. Pause. Cole Herbert playing him as well. We're sitting Roshan and Sean Tucker. Next up, we got the Jags versus the Chiefs in Jacksonville. A rematch, except for in Jacksonville instead of Kansas City for that playoff game last year where Pat Mahomes got rocked, had to take a perk 30 at halftime, and he came out and had a good game. To me, the Jaguars looked like two different teams in this game. In the first half, they looked like a well-oiled machine. Like they were going to just run the score up on the Colts. They get to halftime, they come out at half. And sure, they still look fine, but it just wasn't the same. 
Let's see how it goes in week number two. Hopefully the Jaguars can uh, knock the Chiefs down to 0-2. That would be fun to watch as just like a football fan, like the Super Bowl champs go 0-2. And, and they probably just win the Super Bowl again, right? Because that's just how it goes with the Chiefs. They're just that good. But uh, Travis Etienne, I like in this game. Again, I have been a Tank Bigsby guy all offseason. We did see him in that game last week up against the Colts. I do think eventually he will continue to cut more and more into that workload. But again, it's early on in the season against the Chiefs. We should expect ETN and we could expect a potential multiple touchdown game because this one on paper is very high scoring. For the Chiefs, we got Pacheco, McKinnon, Clyde, Edwards, Hilaire, CEH, and we saw all of them against the Lions. I think against the Jags, we see all of them again. If I had to guess one, I would tell you to start Pacheco because I think when push comes to shove, he's going to play the most snaps in this matchup. But again, do I really want to do that? I was someone that was all in on Pacheco. Not even like super early in the offseason, the middle of the offseason. And then as we get to like July, August, I was like, ah, oh, dude, you're such an idiot. Like, sure, it's cool to have the running back on what should be the best team in the NFL, the Chiefs. But you're also not understanding. What I wasn't understanding is like about the pass catching upside. He just doesn't really have any. And there's a chance that this is just a three-headed amalgamation of a backfield, which was the case in week one. If someone gets hurt, knock on wood, we don't root for injuries. Maybe then Pacheco could really uh, elevate himself again. If push came to shove, I had to play one, it would be Pacheco. But even against the Jaguars defense, I simply just kind of don't want to do that. Moving next to the Colts versus the Houston Texans. Week one up against the Baltimore Ravens. Damian Pierce had a disaster class of a game. Now, I told everyone to start him. He didn't play well. It is what it is, right? The Ravens just kind of steamrolled through the Texans. But now we get the Colts defense, right? This is a little, not a little bit different, a lot a bit different, right? I know the Colts had a decent second half defensively against the uh, Jaguars, and I think the Colts defense is still a good start for fantasy football because I think C.J. Stroud is going to make some mistakes, maybe fumble, throw an interception, get sacked a couple times, and then the defense will be fine. But I think this is the game where you see Damian Pierce play a lot better, right? Damian Pierce is a clear three down back. I think at the end of last game, they tried to work in Devin Singletary a little bit more. They probably watched that back on tape and realized, holy shit, we put out some fucking XFL running back to play. We should have just stuck with Damian Pierce, and I think that's going to be the case in week number two. He is the only running back that I'm comfortable starting in this game. Devin Singletary, again, is terrible. He's so bad. Uh, Deion Jackson, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I'm sorry to everyone who I told to play this guy. Now, again, I am very honest when I tell you guys to start people. In DFS, Deion Jackson dug a grave for me. I played a lot of Deion Jackson. I also played a lot of Tua and Tyreek Hill. And Deion Jackson was the reason why I'm still here making videos and not in Las Vegas smoking a cigar with some strippers on my lap is because of <laughs> Deion Jackson. Now, I would never do that because I'm an engaged man. That is not something I would ever do. But for the purposes of the video, that is what I would have done. I would have been in Vegas right now having a fun time. But no, Deion Jackson sucked. The guy turned the ball over like Josh Allen a couple times. Don't want anything to do with him. Now, Evan Hull isn't going to play. So if Zach Moss doesn't play, I guess you could close your eyes and play Deion Jackson. But I'd definitely rather play Zach Moss if he's the one who, if he ends up being able to start. Next up, we got the San Francisco 49ers at the Los Angeles Chargers. But before we break this game down at the running back position, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play Pick'em for the NFL in the universe. And they have a great offer for you guys on Thursday night, the Eagles versus the Minnesota Vikings. You got to go ahead and pick Jalen Hurts higher than half of a total yard. All he has to do is get one total yard and you match that with one other pick for instance you can go with Justin Jefferson higher than seven receptions if both of those hit you can go ahead and get three times your entry on that if you want to add in a third pick you'd get six times a fourth pick your 10 times and a fifth pick you would get 20 times your entry fee if you want to check out underdog fantasy make sure you check out the link in the video description for a first match deposit bonus of up to a hundred dollars and you have to be in one of the states that are on your screen right now if you Use that link or type in promo code Notorious to get a first match deposit bonus up to $100. If you deposit $100, they give you an additional $100. If you do $50, additional $50, $25, additional $25. The minimum deposit on Underdog is $10. So make sure you guys check that out. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. And we are back. So shout out to Underdog Fantasy again. Niners, Rams, let's keep things simple here. Christian McCaffrey torched the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I was a little bit worried about McCaffrey. Not that I would have sat him. Yeah, I'm just going to play him. 
But I worried, oh, the Steelers defense pretty good against the run. No. McCaffrey gashed them. Light work. Uh, big cock Brock. Great game. Ayuk, great game. Great game out of the 49ers. Going against the Rams. Just expect McCaffrey to have a great game. Elijah Mitchell, there's all this talk about Elijah Mitchell all offseason. Oh, he's going to get more work. Maybe if McCaffrey gets hurt, knock on wood. But until then, it's Christian McCaffrey season. And you're sitting Elijah Mitchell for the LA Rams. Nick, these guys combined for three touchdowns last week. What the fuck you mean you're going to sit them? Well, they're going against the 49ers. They're not going against the Seahawks. They're going against the 49ers defense. Kyron scores two tugs. Cam Akers scores one. Akers has like 1.2 yards per carry. Kyron Williams looks good. Now, someone in the comment section, who was in the army, I believe he said, thank you for your service, if you're watching this, said that I'm saying things wrong. DEFCON 5 is actually nothing is wrong. DEFCON 1 is when everything's wrong, which I don't know how I fucking messed that up. DEFCON we are in DEFCON 5 mode right now with Cam Akers, right? I'm, I'm uh, uh, I guess DEFCON 3. I'm a little bit worried, right? While Kyron outsnapped him, Cam kept getting the touches. The problem is he did nothing with them. So, am I full on panic mode, Cam Akers? No. But everything's not fucking, I'm a cool cucumber. I'm a little worried, right? This week, I don't think either of them are going to do anything, so I don't think it's really going to matter. But we got to check the snaps here. I think Akers will still end up being the lead back, but, uh, that wasn't the best uh, week one effort out of Akers. Next up, we got the Giants at the Cardinals. The Giants, man, oh man, like, obviously what happened to Aaron Rodgers kind of just made the Giants, like, dodge what would have been, like, everyone making fun of them this week, right? 40 owed. 40-0. And it's not like it was on Sunday at 1 o'clock when there's 70 other games going on. It's like, ah, uh, Giants lost by 40, right? You'd forget about it, probably. It was at 1 o'clock on Sunday. This shit was at 8 o'clock in prime time. They couldn't move the ball. They couldn't do anything. And people are like, oh my god, Nick, are you worried about Daniel Jones and Darren Waller, who you said you loved? No, I'm not worried. It was week one. They got the shit kicked out of them. It is what it is. They get the Cardinals this week. If they don't play good here, then it's DEFCON 1. Panic mode. But it's week two now. Right? Week one happened. It is what it is. Sometimes you get bent over a table. Right? That's not going to happen against the Cardinals. Saquon fumbled. Not a great game. <laughs> not a great game out of him, but none of the Giants look good. So bounce back for Saquon. James Conner looked all right against the Commanders defense. The Giants defense couldn't stop, stop a nosebleed against the Cowboys. I think James Conner ends up being just fine. Uh, we talked about James Conner all offseason as an interesting play, interesting draft pick. It is definitely gross to put him in the lineup because the Cardinals offense as a whole is just disgusting. Like, and not disgusting like you're a fucking skater in, like, the 2000 movie. That was totally disgusting, bro. Fucking sound like Davis Maddock. No. Uh, it was okay, right? It, it felt gross to play James Conner. Disgusting, like, bad, but he played okay. I'm thinking he plays good again, okay? So, Conner, Barkley in. Backups, Matt Burita, Keontae Ingram, bad. No bueno, do not play. Now, again, if the Giants shit the bed here, then it's time to start panicking. But... Do the men in black thing when they put the thing in your uh, your face, right? And it, like blur it just you forget about everything. Just forget about everything that happened uh with the Giants in week one. Moving next to the Jets at the Cowboys. Now, if Aaron Rodgers was playing in this game, now I know the Cowboys absolutely stunted on the Giants. I actually think the Jets would fare well here. The Jets defense looked downright incredible. Zach Wilson actually played quite well, and Brees Hall playing limited snaps, just Bent the defense over. Just absolutely took them to pound town. Took them to go look at the Wabbits like they were Lenny and of Mice and Men and they whacked them, right? Brees Hall looked amazing. Unlimited work. This dude would have ran directly into the end zone if Garrett Wilson wasn't hitting the fucking gritty running next to him instead of blocking. Garrett Wilson also made like the craziest catch I've ever seen. Now again, don't want to overreact, but that was an amazing catch, right? Defender basically blanketing him, holding on to him like it's the Titanic. He hits the ball, bam, grabs it with one hand. You couldn't see my hand, but if you watch the game, you don't talk about it. He snagged it out of the air, like uh, in that movie where the guy grabs the the, uh, the bug out of the air. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But Brees Hall, I mean, Garrett Wilson looked great. Brees Hall looked great. The question is, what is Zach Wilson going to do? He's going to get put into a mental fucking chamber against the Dallas Cowboys. This is going to be bad. But I think if Robert Salah... Ends up running the rock, you know, establish the run. Brees Hall should be fine. Now, I don't think they, because even though Brees Hall looks so good, they still kind of, 
held him back a little, right? They put a leash on him. Hey, not too much. Just Not just the tip, because I said, oh, they're going to use him in just the tip. They went fucking full shaft. They, they tried to get the balls in, in there, right? But I don't think they're going to continue to really go all the way with him just yet, right? I think it's going to take a few weeks. Maybe it's this week, right? And I'm just wrong. Brees Hall goes crazy. Wouldn't surprise me. But I think even with Dalvin working in, Brees Hall is going to be good. Dalvin Cook should be fine again. Am I screaming to the mountaintops that you need to start Dalvin Cook? No, he would be closer to a bottom tier start. But I also don't think he's necessarily a terrible start, right? He's he's okay, right? Definitely way better than like trying to chase the dream with Kyron Williams against the fucking 49ers. Tony Pollard looked good against the Giants, but everyone looked good against the Giants. Tony Pollard literally ran in a touchdown where he got handed the ball or pitched the ball, I think. And he was running in basically slow motion. And it was almost like a disrespectful slow motion. Like, he knew that the Giants just couldn't stop him. So let's run at fucking .2 speed. And just right into the end zone. Pretty cool. Uh, Deuce Vaughn. I love Deuce Vaughn because he's short. Short king stand up. Now, I'm not technically a short king because I'm like 5'9". I'm also not super tall. So shout out to my boy Deuce Vaughn. Um, but unless something happens to Pollard, knock on wood, Deuce Vaughn's kind of relevant for fantasy. Unless like a blowout like we saw against the Giants. The left hands up. Who are we? The Commanders at the Denver Broncos. Shout out to the Commanders getting their W, making sure everyone survived their survivor pool. Uh, unless you play the Vikings, then you're sleeping with the fishes. Uh, Commanders at the Broncos. Broncos country list rad. Um, they lost 17 to 16 in week one, which is the same way they lost in week one last year to the Seahawks. 17-16, but, 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 uh, they didn't look bad. Sean Payton might have figured some things out there. Javante looked pretty good. I'll be honest with you. I saw more of Javante than I thought we would. So Samaje is definitely a bench. Javante is a start, but again, he's just, just barely a start, right? If I have other guys, I'm, I'm just sitting Javante. Because again, I don't think he's going to be fully worked up to that workload that he should have just yet. Because he's, again, these injuries are serious that him and Brees Hall endured, Right? I don't expect them to be really just entered directly into the offense at full mast instantly. Now, I think we're much closer to that with Brees Hall than Javante Williams, though. Uh, Javante, again, though, decent matchup against the Commanders. I think he'll end up having a decent game. Will he be a world beater this week? No, but I do think he has that upside on the season uh, to be that. So Samaje is a sit for me. Uh, Antonio Gibson basically got benched against uh, the Cardinals. He did not look good. He had negative fantasy points for a lot of the game. Wasn't good. Um, again, do I think he's benched for the season? No. But I think it's very clear that this team wants to use Brian Robinson. I was way off on Antonio Gibson. I thought they were going to use him a lot. Maybe that fumble was just what did it. And week two, new slate, riverboat run. Uh, forget about it, Antonio. It's okay, man. We'll get you more touches in week two. I think that is possible. But I feel miles more confident with Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson got some hands. He got some hands. Scored a touchdown with his hands. Which I thought, hey, we're not going to see a lot of Gibson, uh, not, uh, Robinson catching the ball. But we did, uh, which was interesting. Again, the Broncos' defense is tough, though. I don't think this is going to be some pushover matchup. Next up, we got, Because you waited all day for Sunday night. The Miami Dolphins at the Patriots in New England, Foxborough. <laughs> don't fucking DMCA me, YouTube, because that was me singing, not Carrie Underwood. Raheem the Dream Moster. Now, Mike McDaniel. I know, it was so fun to watch. Tua toe to toe with with Herbert, even though it wasn't really toe to toe because Herbert was just dumping the ball off. Tua was sending fucking missiles like it was Cuba, the Cuban Missile Crisis, right? Fucking like it was amazing. It was beautiful. Missiles. Tyreek was literally butt naked open. It was amazing. It was so fun to watch as a Dolphins fan. But Mike McDaniel, if you're watching, which I know you are, Mike McDaniel is a huge fan of the, of my channel. <laughs> he plays fantasy football. We all know that. Mike, please, coach. Mr. McDaniel, please run the ball more. We're tearing the Chargers up with the run. Mostert, not the biggest guy, literally made some guy look like a bitch on the Chargers. He, he, like, he would have ran in for the touchdown if he got some better blocking. He scored a touchdown in that game. I know the Patriots defense isn't soft against the run, but Mostert can do something. Give Mostert the ball more. Stop trying to throw a million times, okay? Now it's fun for fantasy, it is. But we need Mostert to get the ball. And as a fan of the team... We scored four seconds. The defense is gassed. They've been out there for a while. Tua closes his eyes, does a 360 like he's playing Call of Duty, throws the ball lefty, like the left hand of God, and bam, 
Tyreek is fucking open and walks into the end zone, and then bam, you are on the field for tw five, seven plays. Defense is out there for an hour. Then they got to go back on the field again. So just run the ball more, please. Please, Mike, run the ball more. Run the damn ball. Raheem Mostert is a start, though. Ramondre, he's a start. For some reason, this bastard, the offensive coordinator on the Patriots, why the fuck? On a crucial third down during that game. I don't know how much people were paying attention to the Patriots game because obviously that Dolphins masterclass was going on. But it's third down. They give the ball to Zeke, not Stevenson. I don't think they're in the red zone, but they were on the other, they were on the Eagles side of the field. Why the hell are you giving the ball to Zeke? Like, what is with the team's infatuation of Zeke? Why do the teams always think Zeke is better than every fan watching the game? That fat bastard? Sit Zeke. Play Ramondre some more. Ramondre did look good against the Eagles, though. Salvin Ahmed um, looked okay. He kind of looks like just the, you know, the breather back for Mostert. You give Ahmed the ball. He can block well. He can catch passes, but he's not going to get featured. Unless, of course, there's an injury to A-Chain in that case, then we would see Salvin Ahmed and, or I guess unless there's an injury to Mostert, then maybe we see more Ahmed. I think Devin A-Chain might make his debut in this game. Again, I don't know why he was a healthy scratch. Maybe McDaniel's just kind of being a little bit cautious, right? He knows what he's got in Ahmed. He trusts him. Trusts Mostert. I get it. Um, but as a fantasy fan, I would love to see Ahmed. Not Ahmed. I would love to see... Ahmed's good too. But I would love to see Devin A. Chain out there. Because again, talked about in the offseason. This is a guy that can catch the ball. And has incredible speed. Like basically just as fast as Reek, Waddle, all these guys. He makes one cut. Makes one defender miss. And the motherfucker's gone 99 yards to, to the crib. To the crib. So I hope we get to see A-Chain some more. But uh, maybe McDaniel's just, you know, he's a rookie. He's a man, you know. We don't need to play him just yet. And then, bam, maybe at the end of the season, he's our secret weapon. Moving now to the first of Monday Night Football. Now, Nick, what do you mean the first of Monday Night Football? There's two Monday Night Football games. Why do they do that? I don't know. But I get ready to flip in between every single channel to watch this. The Saints at the Panthers. Um, Jamal Williams let me down big time. Another one of those guys that was in basically every one of my DFS lineups that saved me from being in uh, Calabasas right now. But I'd still be making the videos in Calabasas. I'd just be chilling on a beach uh, right now. So Jamal Williams didn't play great. But again, I talked about this with Derek Carr in the waiver video. If you haven't seen that, make sure you guys watch that. But this was one of those, the Saints actually look kind of good, but the Titans look so bad that as the game prolonged, we kind of just saw the Saints play down to the Titans level, right? They never really felt the need to, like, go get real explosive in the game. That's what it felt like. Jamal scores, like, 8 points, 9 points, something like that. I don't think he cracked 10. Panthers defense got, got annihilated in the run game by Bijan and Tyler Algier. Carr looked good, I thought, or not amazing, but good-ish. Uh, so I think Jamal has a bounce back spot here. Uh, Kendra Miller doesn't appear to be good to go. So that we're going to get Kermit the Frog, Kirk Mermit, uh, Merit as the backup, Kirk Merit badge, like you're a fucking Boy Scout as the backup, which again, just points towards a heavy load pause for Jamal Williams. Uh, Miles Sanders looked all right. Uh, Falcons defense, like the, the Panthers offense didn't really move the ball too effectively. But Saints defense didn't look amazing against the Titans. I guess they did technically, because Tannehill was just throwing the ball right to him. But I didn't think the defense looked, like, mouth-watering. Now, they'll probably be fine against the Panthers because Bryce Young's a rookie and all. But I think Miles Sanders probably has a better game this week. Chuba Hubbard looked good, in my opinion. But uh, pretty clear Sanders is the guy. Moving to the final game on Monday Night Football, the Browns at the Steelers. Everyone knows the primetime legendary matchup of Kyle Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, versus Miles Garrett, where he got smacked Will Smith-style with the helmet. That's a legendary game. Everyone remembers where they were during that. I was at my friend George's house watching the fight. The fight? <laughs> well, it was a fight, technically. Bam! It wasn't really much of a fight, though. But you got what I mean. I was watching the game. Shout out to George if he's watching this. Nine Inch Nicholas Chubb, you play him, right? Don't galaxy brain yourself. Don't, oh my God, the Browns defense look great against the Bengals. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, no, no. Nick Chubb, play him. Jerome Ford. Sit him. Very simple. You play the starter. That's going to get a lot of the carries. Sit the guy that isn't. Najee Harris. Neither him or Warren look good against the 49ers. You want to know why? Because the 49ers defense is rock solid. And Kenny Pickett did not look good at all. Kenny Pickett looked great in the preseason. Looked like a hot bag of dog shit in the first game. But I think it's a bounce back spot here against the Browns. Najee, still the lead back against the Browns defense. I'm going to play him. Dylan Warren. There's a lot of talks about him getting more carries. Maybe we see that in week two. 
But uh, for me, it's still Najee as the guy, so I'm playing Najee, and I'm sitting Jalen Warren. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Helps me out a ton. If you're new, hit that like button. Click on one of the videos on your screen right now. Make sure you guys do check out Underdog Fantasy. Link in the video description. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great one. If you want to check out my Patreon, I answer every single question on there. I also post my weekly rankings. That will be posted sometime today. They're updated throughout the week, all the way up until Sunday. So I don't just post them on Tuesday, and then that's it, right? Because things change. Eckler's in, Eckler out. Uh, Aaron Jones in, Aaron Jones out. We'll see. So thank you guys for watching. Love you guys all so much. Have a great one, as always. Good boy!